Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Ariane Arsenault and today you are joining me to watch the process of making a new solid shampoo and conditioner made with Labrador tea, glycerite extracts, hydrosol, and also a natural pear fragrance oil. One thing that is a little bit different about this new line of shampoos and conditioner that I'm launching, because I, I have other ones than this one. I also have one with fireweed and honey, one with choke berry and blueberry, but today we're just gonna be covering this one. All of them have in common that they are made with this um, eco-friendly, coconut-derived solid surfactant. It's called Isolux SCMI, and the real name, because that's the trade name, uh, is sodium coquil methyl isothionate. And this is the sample container that I received, but I um, had quite a bit of a problem getting this ingredient. No supplier were carrying it. So in order to get it, after receiving my samples, I had to order a full drum directly from the manufacturer. So here it is. Okay, now you saw my drum of um, Isolux SCMI. The reason why I was really interested in that one is because not only is it um, biodegradable, it's also non-tested on animals and it is super mild for the skin, for the hair, for the scalp. So a very good choice. I'm also using SCI. As you all know, if you are interested in shampoo, you've probably seen this before. It's the sodium coquil isothionate. And instead of using BTMS 50 for my conditioning agent, I'm gonna be using Danox HC30, uh, which I'm gonna include both in my shampoo and in my conditioner. I'm gonna go ahead and put my mask on because working with dry surfactant, when you handle them dry, they tend to be a little bit airborne and irritating to the lungs. And I'm also gonna be wearing gloves. We are gonna start by measuring the SCI and then I will grind um, the Isolux SCMI and add it on top, combine all of my dry ingredients and then follow with the wet portion. Isolux being very coarse and in big chunky flakes, I'm gonna grind it down as I said earlier. Now I'm going to go ahead and measure and grind my dry Labrador tea. Cocoa butter and CT arrow alcohol are going in next. And although using a conditioning agent is not necessary uh, in a shampoo, I really like to include a conditioning agent. So we're gonna go ahead and add the Denox HC30. Let's add our wet ingredients now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my bubbles and suds from Miss Doyle's Soapery. Next, the hydrosol. The dry Labrador tea leaves. Here I have a solution of a Labrador tea hydrosol in which I've dissolved a little bit of citric acid to help lower the pH of this shampoo. I'm also gonna use it to uh, disperse and dissolve my provitamin B5.
to melt down my surfactants and my other ingredients. I'm using a direct heat method. And so we're gonna start by stirring gently so that we don't have any um, particulates flying everywhere. <clears throat> and I'm gonna stay around and stir very often so that we don't have anything burning, scorching off at the bottom of the container. I'm also heating this on low. Uh, you could also do this in a double boiler, but I don't have this big of a double boiler for this size batch. I'm using the direct heat and I'm staying right beside it. While we have the shampoo melting, let's start the solid conditioner. I'm gonna start with the Denox HC40, which is our conditioning agent. Next goes cocoa butter. We got some cocoa butter, which is a very nourishing butter. It origins from India, and I really like to combine it with cocoa butter. It is very hard, so it also helps to hold shape when making conditioners. I'm using cethyl and CT arrow alcohol as co-emulsifiers and thickeners in this formula. And these are both from Windy Point Soaps and they are RSPO uh, sourced supplies. Let's go pop this in the microwave for 30 second bursts until everything is completely melted and combined. I think I forgot to film this part, or actually I thought I was filming, but I wasn't. <laughs> but what I just did is I added the citric acid and DL pentanol solution to my mix and I just stirred it in. I'm going to prepare my glycerite and my natural pear fragrance so that when this is melted down enough uh, or softened up enough, I can add the correct amount directly into there. The texture is slowly softening up and as I stir the butters and the hardeners, the surfactants, everything is starting to get combined and looking nice. While things are still melting, I'm going to prepare the um, liquid portion of the conditioner. So I'm using again the hydrosol, which I'm actually including at very low level. And simply to be able to incorporate, again, I have to dissolve my pro-vitamin B5. It takes a few minutes, but it will eventually completely dissolve and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Here's the solid conditioner. I'm just going to stir things up a little bit so that the ingredients melt down evenly. Back to the conditioner, I'm adding the Labrador tea glycerite. The daikon seed extract. And the pear fragrance. The conditioner is just about ready. There's still some clumps, but they're, I'm gonna break them up and keep melting and I'll be right back to add the oils, extracts, and fragrance. The 
texture for the solid shampoo is perfect. Now I'm just gonna let it cool just a little bit. And then I will add my glycerite and my uh, fragrance oil. I guess you could call this the water phase of the solid conditioner. And this is also one of the reasons why I cure my solid conditioners to give the time to the water content to evaporate before I package them. But because this can, contains a conditioning agent, which also happens to be um, a, an emulsifying wax, well, these will be incorporated in and there won't be any separation happening. It is very intriguing and impressive to see that all of the liquid portion from the solid conditioner is now completely blended in and you can't tell that it's there. It looks just like melted oils and butters. It is now time to pour. I love these silicone molds. They are the perfect size for a bar of shampoo or conditioner. They just hold so well in my hand. They travel very well. They are compact. I got these from Candle Science. Um, they have this model as well as other shapes and sizes. For ease of pouring, I am transferring my solid shampoo into a large measuring cup. Now that the solid shampoos and conditioners have been poured, I can, one, let them harden up on the counter, or I can give them a little help by placing them in the fridge for about an hour. I wanted to show you guys the beautiful lather that this formula creates because uh, lots of people want to see the lather and they want to know if it actually lathers, if solid shampoo works. So this is just water added to the empty cup with the leftover of the batch. And this is a tropical sea sponge that I got uh, from Tarpon Spring. This is hand harvested in Florida. Imagine, imagine this is your hair. Look at the beautiful lather, this is amazing. It's nice, fluffy, moisturizing, silky smooth, rich lather. So yes, yes, you will have lots of lather with a solid shampoo. Well, with my solid shampoo at least, I can tell you that. <laughs> the solid shampoos and conditioner are completely firmed up. However, they will need to cure for at least a week before we uh, package them. So I will go ahead, pop them out of the mold, show you the texture and send them downstairs in the drying trays.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed the process. You can give us a thumbs up if you had a good time. You can also subscribe to the channel to always stay in the know. Um, if you're a crafter and would like more information about ingredients, supplies, equipment, books, blogs, uh, information that is valuable to our industry, always check the description box below as this is where I leave this type of information. If you would like to purchase our products, I have an online store and I have links up here and down in the description box below so you can click them and follow them to our online store. Uh, all of these shampoos and conditioner are a new line and they will launch shortly. They're not available at the time that I'm filming this video, but they will be very soon. I hope you've enjoyed learning about new ingredients such as the Isolux SCMI and the Danox HC40. I will leave some links below, but as I said, they're not available from many suppliers yet. Uh, and I actually had to buy direct from the distributor uh, manufacturer for the Isolux. So uh, hopefully uh, if you ask your suppliers about it, maybe they'll start carrying it in the near future. So do that, ask about it, ask your suppliers and maybe we'll see it more often in um, supplier stores, online stores and so on. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if I forgot anything, I will leave it in the comment or the description box below. So take care and until next time, see you soon.